Hello class. So let's look at the connective tissue images and go from there. So you have already viewed the introduction to connective tissue, a quick refresher, connective tissue connects, binds, and is the most diversified tissue within the human body. There are varieties of cells. <clears throat> Here is something else to look at. Connective tissue is avascular. The cells are spaced out and the interstitial matrix is what's present between the cells. So the space between the cells is filled with interstitial matrix. Matrix is made of ground substance and interstitial fibers. There are many types of connective tissue. Let's look at those samples one by one. So this is areolar connective tissue. As we saw for the introduction, areolar connective tissue is a type of loose connective tissue, meaning it has a greater percentage of ground substance and not as much a lesser percentage of protein interstitial fiber. You can call the interstitial fibers as protein fibers. So they are made of protein. So let's look at this sample here. So what we are looking at, these purple dots that we are looking at, these purple dots are basically the cells of the areolar connective tissue. These cells are referred to as, it's a generalized connective tissue, meaning it's not specialized, unlike bone or cartilage. These cells are referred to as fibrocytes. So this is a fibrocyte. All oh, let's look at here, these cells, these purple dots. Basically, these are all fibrocytes. Site meaning cell. Fibrocyte is a generic name for a cell in a connective tissue. So this name, this um, suffix site, site and blast. Let me just take a moment to talk about this. Blast and site. Blast. If the cell of a connective tissue ends with the word blast, suffix blast, like fibroblast, chondroblast, osteoblast. Word blast stands for an immature cell of connective tissue. Osteo stands for bone. So immature bone cell is osteoblast. Chondro stands for cartilage. So immature cartilage cell is chondroblast. Blast versus site. Site is a mature cell. of connective tissue. So fibrocyte chondrocyte osteocyte mature cells. Immature versus mature cells. So what we are looking at here are the fibrocytes. Each purple dot. 
Now look at how spaced out these cells are. They are not close to one another, unlike epithelial tissue. They are spaced out, they're far apart. Okay. And you can see that there are all these lines that are crisscrossing through. These lines, I'm just going to trace one right here. This line, or these heavier ones, thicker ones, see this, or this, which are slightly wider, don't crisscross as much, don't run in every direction, but rather running parallel to one another, like here. Basically, this are the interstitial fibers. So as we learned, there are elastic fibers and collagen fibers. So you can see areolar tissue is a perfect example of what an average connective tissue will look like. Nicely spaced out cells, interstitial matrix. Interstitial matrix is neither gel-like nor liquid nor mineralized. It has the same consistency as every other organ in the body pretty much. So this just the space where there is no fiber present, this is all ground substance, water, salt, you know, some protein, amino acid, blah, 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 all together. Then this protein fibers, which are collagen fibers or elastic fibers. How do you know which are collagen, which are elastic? Collagen fibers are heavier. These are wider. Let me draw that here. Collagen fibers are wider. They are parallel to one another. Elastic fibers are not as wide, so you can say that they are thinner. And they tend, simply speaking, they tend to cross one another. So basically the crisscrossing pattern. So when you look at, let's look at this area here. If you focus on the fibers, the fibers are going in every direction, here, here, and then here, then here, then here, then here, the thinner one. While focus on the heavier one, look at that, that one wider, heavier looking, there aren't that many of those. So this crisscrossing thin ones, these are the elastic fibers. While this heavier one here, this is the collagen fiber. So we are looking at a different sample of the connective tissue, which is especially stained to show you the different fibers. So here you can see the elastic fibers again, how the elastic fibers are thin, how they are tending to crisscross. So all of these darker lines, here, here, then here, then here, this, 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 this. Notice how in so many directions these fibers are present. They are basically almost radiating at different directions. These are the elastic fibers. Compare that with collagen fiber. Here, what we are looking at, the dark blue, black, those are the elastic fibers. While the reddish fibers, no, notice how these are wider, how these are not running in every possible direction, but they tend to be parallel to one another. These are collagen fibers. So collagen fibers and elastic fibers are the two major fibers within the connective tissue. And you get to see all of those in areolar connective tissue. Next one is adipose tissue. This is also a type of loose connective tissue.
meaning these don't have as many fibers. There are some fibers which you are just not being able to see because the cells of the adipose tissue are plump with fat. The function of the adipose tissue is basically, this is a type of tissue that stores fat. When we say fat, what kind of fat are we talking about? We'll be referring to this in chemistry. We are basically talking about glycerides, the storage fat. Not only glyceride, but we are really talking about triglycerides. Commonly abbreviated as TG. So triglycerides, basically that's what these cells are storing. The cells of connective tissue, or rather adipose tissue, cells of adipose tissue. Recall mature cells are called site. So we refer to these cells as adipocytes. Which one is an adipocyte? You can kind of see that this is an adipocyte. Here is another adipocyte. Here is another adipocyte. Here is another adipocyte. It almost looks like the cells are making contact with one another like an epithelial tissue, but really not. Because this sample, the cells are just filled with so much triglyceride. They have ballooned. Imagine a collapsed balloon, a slightly filled balloon, and a bunch of you know, highly inflated balloons. Basically, that's what these adipocytes are. You can also see that although there is so much fat that the fat has basically moved the nucleus to one corner of the cell. So this reddish dot that we are looking at, these are the nuclei of the adipocyte. The cell, adipocytes, they start out as smaller cells and the nucleus may have been more or less centralized. But as the cell kept storing triglyceride, the cells balloon become larger and larger and larger. And the nucleus, which used to be central, used to be central, is now squashed to one corner because the rest of the cellular space is taken by triglyceride. So that's what adipocytes do. They store triglyceride. So this is taken from a sample where there is a lot of body fat. So what we are looking at, the nucleus, is toward the corner. And that tells you this is not epithelial tissue. Although it may look like the cells are touching one another, this is not epithelial tissue because epithelial tissue, the cells, are not storing anything. So in an epithelial cell, the nucleus is always more or less centralized. While in adipose tissue, which may look like epithelial tissue, the nuclei are always at a corner. Look at this cell, it's in the corner. Here, in the corner, in the corner, toward the corner, toward the corner. And it's vascular. You can see blood vessel. So basically this, what you are looking at here, is a blood vessel. So vascular filled with adipose um, fat, triglyceride, adipocytes, this is a loose connective tissue. Does it have interstitial fibers? Yeah, it does. We just don't see it because the ballooning cells have covered everything else. It's kind of a little special looking connective tissue. So areolar and adipose. This is just to show you again another stain of the adipose tissue. You can clearly see the shape of the cells. Okay, got that? Now 
next one we have here dense connective tissue okay so this is a pretty nice sample of dense connective tissue dense connective as we learned for the intro we call this connective tissue dense because it's what is it dense with it's dense with fibers basically structure matches function so a sample of connective tissue looks the way it does because it has certain function that demands that the tissue look like this so dense connective tissue basically this is connective tissue that's present in places of the body where there is a lot of pressure pull push etc okay so ligament tendon that's where you see dense regular connective tissue ligaments are between bones two bones are connected via ligament tendons which are between muscle and bone so imagine if a muscle is attached to a bone via a tendon let's say this is a bone and this is a muscle and here is the tendon which attaches a muscle to the bone each time the muscle contracts is pulling on the bone there is a lot of tension coming from you know either side mostly from the muscular side so the dense regular connective tissue you call it regular because the fibers that are present in the dense regular connective tissue these fibers are arranged in an organized manner so you can say that dense regular is called regular because it has highly organized fibers what type of fibers the same fibers that we looked at collagen elastic so look at this when we are looking at this sample of dense connective tissue dense regular that is whatever you are looking at most of the things that you are looking at here these are mostly fibers protein fibers highly organized fibers and look at how these fibers are running these are running in a very synchronous manner almost they are all dipping here almost these are dipping here these are waving here and these are straight here all of the fibers are straight in the same place dipped in the same place waved in the same place this is what i mean by highly organized fibers so this is why it's referred to as dense regular connective tissue regular because it's present in places where the stress is coming from or the tension push and pull is coming from one direction only from the direction of the muscle dense irregular connective tissue although we are not really studying that but i'll give you one example dense irregular connective tissue of course you can imagine what it would be like the fibers are disorganized why is that because dense irregular connective tissue is present in places where the tension the push and pull is coming from multiple direction not just one direction so the fibers run in every possible direction uh one example of where you find dense irregular connective tissue is in 
heart valve. Okay, so dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. This is just a magnified version of the dense regular connective tissue. You can again see how the fibers are all pretty much folding in the same place. It's highly organized. You can see a little bit of the nucleus of the fibroblast right here, this corner. You can see the nucleus of fibroblast. This is probably another. nucleus of fibroblast. And this one, this is another. So only in places you can see the fibroblasts. There are just so many fibers, they are obscuring the nuclei. Then they're obscuring the fibroblasts themselves. That's why it's called dense. There are so many fibers, such densely packed fibers that the cells themselves are obscured. Okay, so that's loose and dense connective tissue, the two most common type of connective tissue. Okay. 